feel like my tongue is going to start not being able to articulate what I want it, to, like for words. <laughs> that's, that's, but that's we're just going to keep going. Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First Week Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today I'm joined by EDM's class clown, Dylan Francis. You know him from his many hit records and remixes, his much buzzed about stage shows, and you can catch him alongside James Vanderbeek on Viceland's What Would Diplo Do? Check your local listings. Dylan, welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you with spicy food? I think I'm pretty good, but I could be completely wrong. This show is really the test of that, yeah. so we'll see where you fall. Yeah, that's, that's why I wanted to be on here. Also, just because I saw the DJ Snake one and I was crying laughing, so. Oh, well that's actually a poetic segue to the first wing. I love when that happens. <laughs> you ready to go? Yeah, let's do it. And you gotta eat the whole wing, right? So, there are no rules. I think you gotta make some hard, hard rules. rules. Yeah. yeah. So for years, I know that you've been involved in a bitter back and forth prank war with DJ Snake. And when he was on the show, he told us about how upset you got when he put your cell phone number up on the big screen at Ultra. Mm -hmm. I wonder what that experience was like from your perspective and what did you do to retaliate? It did suck. Cause I remember the number it was 424-333-6892. And I just loved the number. It was so easy to remember. And then he ruined my life. My phone battery was gone in one second cause I was getting so many text messages from people at Ultra. I guess I did kind of prank DJ Snake back as well where we put his face on top of like a male porn star and you know. Had the junk out and everything. The, yeah, yeah, they had the junk out but digitized it so you couldn't see it. And he was fine with that, he was laughing. But I did it to Martin Garrix one time at this festival in Amsterdam and he, he called me and he was pissed. Well, Martin's so sweet. I how know, exactly. Do, how can you do that to Martin? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just like, I think everyone has my train of thought where it's like, if you see that image, you're gonna be like, that's so funny. But he was like, dude, my parents were at the festival. Like you can't put up images like that. They're gonna think it's real. Funny story, actually. The way that I like really connected with Skrillex, I was at South by Southwest. I feel like it was this sauce. I dabbed it. I had to take my shirt off and hold it against my mouth. It gets like that sometimes. It was awful. Yeah. So in your merch shop, you sell everything from t-shirts to branded fidget spinners. But yes. what caught my eye is the awesome shit tab where you sell, and I'd want to make sure I list some of these off. You'll do a fan's taxes for 7,500 bucks. Absolutely. You'll go vegan for a year if someone forks over 150 grand. I just want to look good. You'll put together a fan's Ikea furniture for 10 stacks. Already did that. I yeah. was going to ask, has anybody ever called your bluff and pulled the trigger on one oh, of these yeah. purchases? built Ikea furniture for, I think it was Huffington Post. They bought it, cause that was like the only way we would do an interview with them. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm trying to think of what there's, oh yeah, some other, a mom, coolest mom ever, bought Babysit Your Kid. So I came over and, and I did like a whole babysitting video with him. What if somebody forked over $25,000 to ruin their stepdad's Christmas? Uh, How do you think you'd even do it? I would just home alone it. I think I'd probably do like, exactly what's in the script for Home Alone 2. Paint cans, Paint cans coming down, down, marbles on oh, the yeah. hardwood floor, whole thing. Stepdad would not want to be there anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm scared. I really want to get to the last dab. I think you'll make it. You think so? I can see the uh, eye of the tiger in you. <laughs> So before we move on, I just want to say you're looking Jack, dude, and I'm happy that we could help you with your protein intake today. Are you still doing CrossFit? Where no. are you at on your fitness? I've been so bad lately. <laughs> could you do a handstand push-up, or what do you think is like, uh -uh. the most impressive thing you can do physically? Nothing. I can stand on top of a DJ booth and like wave my hands like this. And jump up and down. Exactly. How do you think Skrillex would do in a CrossFit class? Do you think he'd make it through on-ramp? We did it. We did one actually together. Um, he did well. 
He liked it, but then I don't think he ever did it again. The thing about CrossFit is that the people who do CrossFit never shut the fuck up about CrossFit. From somebody who is on the inside, what do you think it is about that group workout class that people connect to so powerfully? I think the reason a lot of people talk about it so much is because they want all their friends to do it with them. It's almost like Game of Thrones. I don't watch it, but so many people talk about it and then they make you want to like have to feel like you need to go and do it or watch it so you can be a part of like the little clique. Some common ground. Yeah. That's I mean, I came here alone, you know? So, fuck that shit. How many wings do you, you think you eat a week? So the show's weekly, so that would be like at least 10 wings. And then anytime anybody wants to do anything with me, it always involves wings. It has to be wings. wings. Uh -huh. That's my whole you. thing. For me, it's always like, do something funny. Right. For, the, for, for a picture. That's my favorite. When someone's like, hey, let me get a picture. Do something funny. What the fuck do you do funny in a picture? Like this? No. It's not bad. I, yeah, but everyone just, just been done. Right, right, right. Like, I don't know what else to do anymore. And then too, you feel like a seal balancing a ball on your nose, exactly. you know? And then it's like, listen, nobody wants to complain about celebrity lifestyle, but listen, there are some pitfalls to it. There is. And you know what I mean? has to do funny things in pictures. Yeah, constantly. I just need to start taking my dick out. Th that's the move. That's the move. That's the move. That's it. So back in 2012, your tour rider leaked online and it made some headlines because yes. he had some interesting things like a signed photo of Avicii, a bag of jasmine rice, a blow up doll. You're forgetting a lot of the really good stuff on there though. What did I miss? What did I a miss? A gun, black tar heroin, lube, lube. the blow up doll. Naturally. And the reason I bring that up is because that's all a joke, of course. <laughs> I don't want black tar heroin. Um, but we were going through we were going through Canadian customs and uh, the promoter put my writer in the customs form. Oof. So they found it and this was when Floss was touring with me. We got woken up at like 4 a.m. and we're all sitting in the customs area and the, and, and the cop comes up and he goes, am I gonna find any child pornography on the bus? And everyone looks at me and they're like, what the fuck did you do? Who the fuck are we touring with? I don't know why they assumed there was child pornography on the bus. Right. Because I did ask for assorted genres of porn, but they went straight to like the disgusting part, and I guess that's because the gun and black tar heroin, that's, you know. They were just going you down have the road that, that you paid yeah, for. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so then everyone looked at me as they left and like, what is on your writer? And I'm like, I swear to God, not kid porn, but like there's a gun and, mm -hmm. and heroin. So they went and they tore up the bus and they also took a shit on it, which we had to pay for. And so you're not allowed rude. to shit on buses if anyone doesn't know that. So this one is the hot one sauce. You're on the hot Fire one show. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Ooh, that's good. All right, Dylan, well, we have a recurring segment on our show called Explain That Gram, where we do a deep dive on our guest Instagram, pull interesting pictures that need more context. So I'll bust out the laptop, I'll show you the picture, and then you can tell me the bigger story. Does that sound good? Let's do it. All right. First things first, world famous DJs have the best Instagram accounts. And this is a perfect example of it with the fireworks waterfall mm -hmm. behind you. Sometimes I don't even know that, they, that we have anything. <laughs> do the pyrotechnics and stuff, do they ever catch you by surprise? Yes, definitely. There was one at Red Rocks where I was standing on the booth and it started going and it was so close to me. I was like, oh shit. And so I got off immediately. I just, I'm just a tired person all the time. So you get the so, notes about what's happening, you kind of glance over it and then yeah, you don't yeah, even exactly. really know that you're in danger until you're like Until I'm fire. there. I li it, that's, it's so funny because that's exactly what I do. I'll glance over something and be like, all right, cool. And they'll be like, oh, that, oh, that was in the email. Yeah. Oh, my bad. Hanging out with Dylan Francis super fan, Kate Hudson. Kate's a good friend of mine. I had known that she was friends with Diplo and uh, she was listening to Coming Over, one of my songs. Um, it's on Spotify right now. <laughs> uh, actually, it just reached uh, 100 million on Spotify. And there you go. no one will send me a plaque because I thought that was a really big achievement, but no one else does because all these fucking asshole pop stars are like getting way more streams 
Yeah. And my accomplishments are just diminished. <laughs> you know, it's I, so it's so shitty. I think about that sometimes, and <laughs> I'm gonna go off topic here for just a second. But this is what I think about. Like I, we're just on like the little tip of the YouTube iceberg. Yes. But sometimes you dig a little bit deeper, and I see all these like conventionally attractive young adults just doing diss tracks to each other, <laughs> and then all of those videos have like hundred million Millions. views. It's like crazy. Like we're little we're YouTube nothing. ants on the bottom of oh, their yeah. shoe, and then that's gotten to a point where they've kind of actually eclipsed like actual real accomplished talented artists. Well, if you want to get into that, we can go. Let's get into that. Real okay. Quick. I'm also just older though. I'm not from that generation, so maybe I'm just being a hater. Yeah, we're both a little out of touch. Exactly. But like when you see, for instance, Gasafelstein's music video for Pursuit. I don't know how many views it has on on YouTube. Hopefully way more than most vlogs. Probably not though. Probably they probably not. have like 16 million and Gustafsson probably has maybe 2 million. Right. But it's a work of art. Like really incredible that it goes so well with the song. So it is it is kind of like man, fuck. Maybe I should just stop doing <laughs> Fun, stop cool trying art. So yeah. hard. Why, stop trying why are we so trying hard. so hard? I don't know. We gotta stop. It's a waste of time. We should just start filming ourselves, clipping our pubes, <laughs> just doing our daily lives, and that and we're and gonna get bam. millions of views. Oh, but there you go. There's the heat. There it's coming. It's finally it's coming. here. We got four more. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. I see you. So one of the things that I like about you most is your willingness to poke fun at EDM festival culture and the like through these alter egos like DJ Rich's fuck and Hansel. What's up? Welcome to How You Say With Hansel. We are here with Flostradamus. Uh, how you guys say I hate every music you make, every single thing ever done, and I don't like the way that you dance on stage. What's something that you hear EDM fans complain about that makes you roll your oh, eyes? Oh, okay, that's, I like that. This is something that, that actually pisses me off a lot, and I think it pisses off a lot of artists, where fans will always be like, man, I miss the old Dylan Francis. Jay-Z's already talked about this a long time ago, where it's, if you listen to my old music, then you'll be happy again. Uh, but it's, it's obnoxious when, those fans keep saying that to any any new release, and then if you release something that sounds like the old version of you, they'll just say, oh, this sounds like the old version of Dylan Francis. I don't really like this that much. I try not to complain anymore, or even give it the time of day where it's just like, all right, cool. Go complain in a thread on Reddit. I don't care. Let me bring up something that comes up with EDM all the time, because a lot of people say, you know, maybe models or celebrities, to leverage the big name in order to get that DJ spot rather than having ability or wow. talent. Do you think that that's something that's a little overblown? Is it a legitimate criticism? What do you think about that? Yeah, I just don't think it really affects a, a music producer, just because I think we're in, we're, you know, we're still a part of musician world, right? even if Liam Gallagher doesn't think we're, <laughs> Cool. Who do you respect more as an artist? Paris Hilton or DJ Pauly D from Jersey Shore? What? You can't do that. That's, that's tough. Holy shit. <laughs> oh man. Probably Paris Hilton. Right? I don't I don't think there's a right answer to this one. Have you ever just like drank milk before doing the hotter ones? So T Pain had that as a strategy. He didn't wanted work. to. Uh, it didn't seem to. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like now is as good a wing as any to talk about your IMDB page because What Would Diplo Do premiered last month. I'm finally an actor. And you're actually in a movie called Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse. Yes. Oh, I like that. That's that's awesome. That's the hot ones <laughs> difference right there, Dylan Francis. <laughs> Was seeing your head explode on the silver screen a bucket list item for yes, you? Yes, absolutely. And when Chris Landon told me that, I was so happy because I was like, fuck yeah, yes. What would be a bigger thrill for you, hosting Saturday Night Live or winning a Grammy? Wow. I would honestly want to host Saturday Night Live because that's, I grew up, sorry, some of the hotness mm -hmm. got in my throat. <laughs> And staying on the topic of TV, on The Tonight Show, Jimmy Fallon and Chris Rock, they had the Not Playlist segment. Did you yes. see this? Yeah. And they went after you, Dylan Francis. Yeah. What'd you think of that? I loved it. <laughs> this is hot. <laughs> <laughs> Trying different ways to eat it. Mm-hmm. Smart. It's so weird that, do, do people normally eat this? Like, 
Is some person actually eating this every day? And what is it doing to their intestines? I can speak to that, but... <laughs> you know, I've met so many hot sauce badasses doing this job, you know, uh -huh. like nothing I ever do is ever hot enough for anybody. I can't satisfy anyone's uh -huh. hot sauce bloodlust. And so many people are like, dude, I put the bomb on my eggs. Like, it's not that big a deal. But that seems to me like a chaotic person. Milking chicken is weird. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But it's, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do to survive here. Oh, mm -hmm. this one sucks. Mm-hmm. It tastes like a piece of shit. shit. Piece of common shit. complaint, piece common complaint. Shit. Oh my god, milk and chicken is fantastic! <laughs> yeah. That one sucked. Mm -hmm. Holy shit, my tongue is on fire. Yeah, yeah. And you say sucked in sort of these past tense, but you're now in the I'm soup. I'm in it. You're in the soup. I'm in the soup of the bomb. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's go forward, man. Okay. Well, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about your bromance with Diplo, whether it's catching a Phillies game or exploring the Swiss Alps with your shirts off or hitting the beach on vacation. You guys seem to do everything together. I feel like my tongue is going to start not being able to articulate what I want it to, like for words. <laughs> that's, that's, but that's we're just going to keep going. Mm -hmm. um, he's... Uh, uh, it's so bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're telling me. <laughs> I keep drinking my milk. What's the biggest misconception about Diplo, you think? What do people get wrong about him? That he's not an innovator? I feel like some people may say that sometimes, which is weird. Just, I mean, it's crazy that um, he just he's always on that next hip hop thing or that next dance hall thing or just anything, honestly. Taste level above it's, the waist level. Exactly. And it's so it's just inspiring to see that all the time. So I guess if anyone thinks that he's not, that was a nice atomic burp. I felt that bomb. one. <laughs> Shook the table. <laughs> I feel like my nose is just gonna start pouring out uh, <laughs> snot, so if it does, my bad. Oh man, I don't want to eat this one. Yeah. <sighs> Remember how on like the second wing, you're like, you need rules. Everybody's gotta eat all the wing. And then like, no. <laughs> now I'm like, man, I want to throw this away. Well, I'm trying not to be a, a little bitch about it. Mm hmm For sure. I just realized the milk is a bad idea. It takes all the sauce off the wing, turns into liquid, puts liquid heat on my throat. But what's the alternative? You know, not go with the milk? It's yeah. hard to do. It's almost impossible to do. Oh, man. Oh, there it is. <sighs> yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> So despite all the drama and infighting that you see in EDM, much to your credit, you really seem like the junior high kid that can sit at any table in the cafeteria. So what I want to do is hit you with some yearbook superlatives, and you can tell me which DJ best fits the description, okay? Love it. Best dressed. Wow, oh, that's a, uh, Mark Ronson or DJ Snake? DJ Snake's got like the athletic version down. Most likely to succeed in something besides DJ. I feel like Martin Garrix is up there. If he wasn't DJing, he would still be doing some cool shit. He'd be fine in, in the Netherlands on some, in GQ magazine, <laughs> Netherlands. Biggest drama king? Jaws. Jaws is a drama king. His his Twitter, sorry Jaws, but you're a little bitch sometimes. <laughs> he, he like is always like complaining about something that's very niche. Like it's about like when when it's like man the plane's not on time right right and it's everyone, only his problem but no one can relate like, to yeah. that not that's the most unrelatable thing I've ever heard who gives a shit too <laughs> biggest flirt biggest flirt Diplo for sure this, the heat from my mouth is causing my brain to not function that well oh we dab one right mm hmm yeah. All right, Dylan, so this is the last dab. It is called the last dab because it's tradition around here to put a little dab on the last wing. Oh, God. You don't have to. I'll do it. If you don't want to. Yeah, no, no, no. I have a feeling that's where this was going. There you go. Dab it. Oop. Cheers. Cheers, Dylan. What a run it's been. It's been great. Do you go for the... Oh, never mind. Uh-huh. Ooh. 
I like this one already. That's a green sauce. Mm hmm. Little mustard action. By the way, all I've had today is coffee. <laughs> so my stomach is about to just Bro. be so mad. Rookie mistake. I know. I was about to get a sandwich from Starbucks downstairs, but then I was I didn't want to be late. I wanted to be a punctual, punctual, nice human being. Total pro. Bad idea. I can't feel my mouth. Mm -hmm. So that's good. <laughs> you ever just top it off? What's the top it off? You just like take a little dab. Just maybe like, maybe this is the way you deal with the dab, the last dab. Is by chasing it with chasing a it. less intense hot sauce yeah. in the hopes that that kind of steals the chair. Yeah. I mean, it's just I'm gonna last dab the beginning. That's. It's an interesting move. I've not seen this one yet. Who knows if it'll work? Just coat the mouth with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Might work. Might work. <laughs> <sighs> I think I might have just like uh, exacerbated the situation. <laughs> All right, Dylan, this is the last wing. I have one more question for you, okay. and we're going Von Deeper yes. with this one. Because I want to talk to you about a catchphrase that stuck with you your whole career. It's I-D-G-A-F-O-S for the uninitiated, I don't give a fuck or shit, which yes. I think is a brilliant life philosophy. And so here's what I wonder. What is your best piece of advice for how people can apply this ideology to their lives? How do you think a world would be a better place if everyone adopted a no fucks given attitude? There's certain things to give fucks about, but most of it's most of it was for, you know, not caring about what anybody's saying about either your style, whatever you're doing, whatever you're making, whatever you're trying to create, whatever you want to do online, whatever you want to do in real life. Do your thing. Don't let anyone get in the way. Be spirited and happy along the whole thing and you know, don't give a fuck or shit what anybody thinks. Dylan Francis, you look good. I can tell that you feel good when you put your arm up. No perspiration whatsoever. How amazing. This camera, this camera, or this camera, let the people know what you have going on in your life. I have a new song coming out soon with Young Pinch. Just finished the What Would Diplo Do show. This is the best show on YouTube. Oh, fuck a vlog. Dylan. <laughs> that was fantastic. I hate myself. My body is gonna really just be so angry later. Oh god. <laughs> oh I got milk and hot sauce just it's a day in the inside life. of me. <laughs> Hello world, Sean Evans coming at you to say thank you for watching. If you like what you saw, please subscribe. We're hovering around the 3,000th ranked YouTube channel in the world. It has been a childhood dream of mine to be somewhere in the mid twos. We're so close. Help make an adult bald man's dreams come true. Please, please, please. JK, JK, no pressure. But if you do subscribe, I appreciate it.